everything's so good. That's why I hit my keyboard. I think we're good. Okay. All righty. So this is the watercolor inspiration. And I'm going to place this off to the side. And I've got one up here too that you can keep your eyes on. And kind of give you an idea of the kit. Comes in this, you know, cute little box and little tools come wrapped up. And you'll have some brand new paint and your canvas and your transfer paper and your line art some plates, napkins, apron, all that good stuff. So again, you can, um, I'll have all the links below. And then all you need to get is some water nearby. And then other than that, you'll be all set. All right, so let's go ahead and start with how to do this transfer process. And I do have a separate tutorial on just transfer work if you need to look at that as well. But I think most people get it with this little guide here that I go over. But um, you want to make sure that the dull gray side faces up, shinier black side faces the canvas. That'll help make that image transfer to your canvas here. So I start by placing the transfer paper down first. I only take up at the very top here and here. I leave the sides free and open so that you can check your work as you go. I have worked ahead a little bit. So um, keep in mind, I've got the inking process already done. So we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. When you first do yours, it's going to look like a, a pencil mark. So it's gonna look more like this light shading here. All right. And then let's go back to this setup initially. So transfer paper again, dull gray side up, shiny side facing the canvas. And then I just, level this up at the very top and then center it right in the middle and then you'll be good to go. Once this is in place, then you'll take the pencil uh, that comes to the kit and you'll just basically start to make a line everywhere you see a line. And that'll make that transfer work happen. And then this little bit of shading, even though it is painted over, I think it's a nice guide while you work. But to create that and keep it soft, I turn the pencil over on the side and I just kind of rub on the side. And that will leave that transfer happening. You can see how that looks. Again, it just looks like pencil shading. Okay, so that's just a nice little reference to let you know that, yes, that is a place that becomes a little bit darker. All right, so I did all my penciling here. And then let's talk about this monogram letter. So with our kit, we have um, formatted the full alphabet to size um, to be the exact same size as this M. So if you need a different letter to go in um, on top of your silo here, then basically you'll just take that little letter from our sheet and you'll cut it out. And then you'll just need to uh, tape that right here over the top and then just cover up that M. And then you would just do, instead of tracing over my M, then you would trace over whatever custom letter that you wanna do. So that's how you would do that. That way it'll be all set up and ready to go for you. All right. Um, so, and again, just as another very important reminder, leave the sides open so you can check your work. It's nearly impossible to ever go back and uh, line this back up unless you have some special gift that I don't have. Um, Again, you want to be sure and double check everything. We're all good. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this off. I'm going to get to the fun stuff. And I do want to talk about the inking. So some of this stuff is pretty light, and I don't necessarily want the inking done here. But, you know, so I just have this as more of a reference because we're going to cover over this with paint, but it's just more of a reference for me to know when that becomes a bit darker and the shading is done. So you can necessarily not work as hard as I did on putting in all those extra details. Um, but I did go ahead and do a hard black line around all the edges because I really want to make sure that that does bleed through the paint on our first wash of paint in the beginning, just in case we don't lose any of all that, you know, hard work that we did to have all those shapes in place. And then of course, when the ink does need to be obscured to just serve as a base shadow underneath color, then I'll teach you how to get to that point, but it works really well for beginners. All right, so we've got this done. 
And of course, if you need to just pause and get caught up, you're certainly welcome to do that. And then I've got our paint ready to ready to go off to the side. I have a little bit of a, a pre-escort, if you will, with the titanium white and the Mars black. And then I'm trying to use up my um, older paint kit since I have a lot of extra paint here. I'm trying to use this up. So when you start to get paint out of your little tubes here, some important tips are that um, when you go to un, you know, screw the cap here, there will be a silver foil liner that you're going to have to peel off. That way the paint can come out of the tube. And then whenever you are done using that, you want to go ahead and make sure and put that cap back on because this is acrylic paint. It does set up and dry pretty quickly and you want to protect your paint, make it last for a long time. All right, now we have our little family of brushes over here. So I have Mama, and then I have Little Buddy, and then I have Little Bit. And of course our napkins, and then our water. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and start with this beautiful sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of this primary cyan blue here. And I'm gonna do a little generous pea size amount almost like a dime size amount of that and then got a little bit of iridium here this might add just a teeny amount of like a turquoise feel to that sky when it starts to mix in with our blue all right we have our white and then we have our black so we're going to be using a little bit of all that all right, so I'm going to start with my mama brush. I'm going to go ahead and just place her in the water just a little bit, get her a little bit moist, and do a quick little dab here on the napkin. And then I'm going to take this brush, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of the white. Um, let me go back here, though, too, and say that if you're just starting to squirt out paint from the tubes, uh, on the white, I would say a generous quarter size dollop of white would be great. And then with your black, you know, at least this size, maybe all you need, just about that to get started with. All right, so I'm going to take Mama. I'm going to use kind of like a little shovel here. I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white. Just going to place it off to the side. Then I'm going to do a tiny little touch of that primary cyan blue, tiny touch of the viridian. I'm going to start to work all that together. And this is going to give me a really pretty light, turquoise color. It's going to be really light and pale. Yeah, a little bit more viridian to make that more turquoise. Now, if you want a little touch of slate in there too, then you can just barely touch the black and have a little bit of those gray tones in there as well, which is also really pretty. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Help that paint really flow. And then we're going to just start to push this across the canvas. A nice horizontal strokes here. Again, a little bit of water. A little bit of that beautiful turquoise blue that we mixed up. And again, if you want a little bit more of that, those gray tones happening, you can push into that and push that across. And then as I'm working this across, you can also do a little bit of some cloud cover happening. So I take that same brush. I don't even rinse it out. I just kind of pick up a little bit of white and softly push that across a horizontal stretch. Just push that back and forth. And we're just going to keep going with that. I'm going to grab a little bit more water, make this a little bit more fluid here, and keep working this back and forth. And we have our nice inking here. So you can see how that is bleeding through beautifully. So that saves me a lot of time with any of that tedious cutting work on that tree. And that tree is certainly going to be a lot darker than the sky. So I can just do a nice little wash all the way through here. It's just really lovely, very easy to do. Just makes it a little bit easier for beginners. Go ahead and do a little bit more of a tidy cut in around a little silo here. Roll that brush more over to the side, just come back and forth. And it's not quite perfect, it's not a big deal. 
Once again, our inking bleeds right through and do some nice horizontal sweeps here. And then soft horizontal strokes. I have to mix up a little bit more. I have a little bit more here of the blue, the white, a little bit of Viridian. Work that together. Now that's getting pretty opaque over the top of that tree. I want a little bit more water, make it more of a wash by a little bit of firm pressure to get that back to where I can see it. And then some pressure, a little bit more water into the paint. And there it is. So there's our little tree peeking through. And continuing on here, do a little cutting work around that silo. Hold that brush like a pencil, you get that nice line edge to do that more meticulous work for you. And then now that we're working into a larger area, we're going to turn that brush back over to the side. That will give you a lighter, more gentle hand. And allow that flat side of the brush to face the canvas and make a nice gentle stroke of that color across the side. Continue working this all the way across here. A little touches of white, just kind of work that back and forth. Add a little bit of water. If you get a little bit of that dry brush happening with the white, add a little bit of water. And sweep in some of this cloud cover, little bits through here too. All right, so we have a beautiful sky happening in the background, a little bit of that cloud cover happening through there. And you can certainly add more dramatic clouds if you want to, just keep touching into that white and sweeping it through if you want more of that coverage. So big sweeps, nice horizontal strokes all the way across. Yeah. You can just say, you know what, I think we're good. Nice, beautiful, bright blue sky. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. And then dry off. Let me check you a little. Maybe a little bit more feathering there. All right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit of this groundwork here with our green. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of our bright yellow green here. Let's move around this side of the plate. Pretty much matches the plate. Give that a quick turn. A little bit of our cadmium green. Nice dime size dollop. And let's see, let's get a little bit of some brown mixed up too. So I'm going to grab some cadmium orange. And we're going to take a little bit of that black and mix that with our cadmium orange, and that's going to make brown. And there it is, because we can use some of that to help blend in with our green. As well. And while I've got my brush lighted up, what the heck, let's go ahead and just kind of work that in a little bit here. Work that across. It touches. Add a little bit of water. You can darken up that brown too a little bit, make it darker brown. And also add a little bit of white to it. And let's go ahead and kind of work that into that trunk there. 
And if it mixes in with a little bit of that blue, it's okay. It'll add the nice little hint here. It's pretty. I'm just going to go ahead and do a soft little curve out to the ground line. And then just go right over those little lines and do a little quick sketch of that. So, right there. And then just underneath these little tufts of grass. And then that's starting to obscure um, those black lines too. So where they're just becoming shadows. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a pounce effect here with that light brown, just kind of right over the top, just tap, tap, tap. tap. And then as I get farther out, little tiny taps and tap right there. A little bit of our base there. Let's get a little bit of that foundational dark shadow in. Tap on the side of the brush. Tap in here. A little tap in here. Okay. We're going to tap in a little bit of brown up into here, too. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and work in. We're not going to do all the green grass. We're just going to get the base in now. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the light, uh, bright yellow green, and a little bit of that cadmium green, and a little bit of white. And let's grab a little bit of that brown in there, too. Let's kind of mix it all. Together, that brown's going to kind of smooth it out to a little bit of a give it a bit of a sage hue there, and then we're going to start to just work this into the ground here. A little bit of water, also, and just going to smooth that out. And nice horizontal strokes. Let's grab a little bit more of that brown, add a little bit of white to it. And the nice horizontal strokes that go all the way across. I pushed into a little bit of black there, but that's okay. Put a little bit of that gray, soften it up a little bit. And a little bit more of that bright yellow green and that cadmium green with that gray. And we'll just smooth this out into our brown line. Then this is a little bit of gray, a little bit of that soft bright yellow green. And then we'll work this into these little sections in here. Do quick little pulls right through here. I'm holding the brush a little bit more like you'd hold a pencil and just kind of pull that straight up and then kind of do a little side push here. And then a little bit of coverage into here horizontally. And then you're going to do that cut in, turn the brush, kind of hold it like you hold a pencil. That gives you that thinner line edge of the brush. I work a little bit around that and then just quick little pulls up. Gives you a little bit of that texture. That's just a little bit of our first coat there. Just we have a little bit more texture to do. We're just kind of getting a little bit of that first layer in. And bright yellow green, a little bit of that cadmium green, maybe even a little bit of that gray. And then we'll go ahead and kind of push into this little shape here. And we still have to do our silo, so I'm just going to do that first little layer of green, but I, I'm not going to work on all the texture yet because that's going to have to come into the foreground. So we'll work on that when we get done with our silo. But I'm just going to get a first little layer of that green as our foundation. And then a little layer of green in here. 
push that in. And then little touches of that green over the top of the brown. And just that first layer there. Pushing to a little bit more of that cadmium green, getting darker touches in here, that darker green. Just little tiny pats of that right over the top. I'm going to tap in a little bit more texture over the side. A little bit of white, a little bit of that bright yellow green, just tiny little pats right over the top there. All right, now I'm going to rinse out. And we're going to go ahead and work on some of this beautiful uh, gray in our silo. And there's a little bit of rust nearby, so I want to go ahead and get some of that. We do have this here, which is nice. We're going to, I'm going to mix up, I've got little buddy, by the way, a little bit of black, a little bit of orange. We're going to mix up a little bit more of that nearby. I'll leave some of it with a little bit of the stronger orange undertones in case we want more of that rust. The other thing we can add will be our cadmium red. And we have a little touch of that in there as well. Okay. A little bit of a red hue to it. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just rinse that real quick. I'll go back to that light gray. So again, this is white, using the mama brush, white, little teeny tiny amount of black. Let's get a little bit of water. And let's do a little soft coat here. We'll work into that right up next to that shadow line. And carefully go around that circle. Whoops, like I just didn't do. Okay. It's going to be black, so it'll cover up what I just did. But... Right, so we want to go ahead and do a nice little vertical line here. I can get coverage there. And then let's go ahead and pull out to the side here with those horizontal pulls. Get that texture going the right direction. Keep going out and pull it there. And it's a lighter gray. And don't worry about the tops of the grass. We're going to come back in and pull up the grass texture over the top of the silo here in a little bit. So if you do have a little bit of overpaint over the grass, it's all good. Got that light gray. I'm going to do a little good coverage there. And then I want to get that horizontal stretch going that way again. And there we go. All right, now I want to get a darker gray over here on this side, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that black for a darker charcoal gray here. And then let's go ahead and push that into the side. So I want this edge done. And kind of a little pull into the side layer. And get just underneath this line. I'll be real careful in here. And then I want to turn it, hold it like a pencil so that I can get into that really thin line area for that little line of shadow. Make sure you kind of go over that black line. Just gets reinforced as a shadow underneath there. And then we'll just work. 
right up next to that little fishes. And fill this in. Okay. Right, so we have our little shadow down. All right, and then we're going to start to work on a little bit of texture here. So I'm going to use my little Betty brush, and we're just going to go into a little bit of that rust color and that brown. And then we're just going to do like light little holes across here. Just a little bit more orange there. Just kind of lightly pull that across. It's a little bit thick, the rest is a little bit thick here, and then as I kind of lightly drag, I kind of let the brush go into a little bit of a thin line. I'll take that across. Right, little lines of rust all the way across there. Okay, I'm just going to take it all the way across. And then I'm using my little body brush. And then this is my orange and my brown. And when it's a little bit of a thicker amount of brush, I can kind of hold the brush a bit more on the side at a thicker area of the brush and I touch the canvas. So. And you can let a little, you know, a few of these little holes kind of stretch out mm -hmm. over the dark charcoal gray here. Mm -hmm. And we'll just keep making those little tiny variations go all the way across. I'm going to have a little bit more thickness here with the red. I'm going to add a little thicker section of that. Make some tiny little lines, kind of echo the lines of the silo in here. And you can have a few of these little lines kind of come back in in this direction as well. And my brush probably picked up a little bit of the gray in there too. And that's okay. So I'm making the silo horizontal lines a little bit more pronounced, so it's a bit more fun here on this one. All right. So where could we turn this a little bit more? Mm 
we got a little bit of that light, or I'm sorry, the darker charcoal gray, and we're going to do a little bit of a line down. And then just a few little holes out into our side. More of that dark charcoal gray, and just a few little holes from that line into the center. So from outside going into the center. All right, we're going to have a little look through there. It's looking pretty good. And then we'll go back into that darker charcoal color. And it's going to kind of wiggle it around the shadow line. And so I don't, I want to kind of soften it a little bit so that it's not just one dark line. So just a little bit of shimmy back and forth. Barely around that line, kind of go back and forth. And a little bit of that, yeah, more of that dark charcoal. I'm just kind of shimming it back and forth there. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of this black and just kind of go up underneath this roof line here. So a little bit more of that black, touch that with that darkness just underneath, and just do a little bit of that horizontal stroke all the way across. And I'm also going to do just a little tiny touch of black right into here. A little bit of the base. And I've got my ink lines doing the line work. That's going to come in handy with that shadow work underneath. I'm going to rinse out. And then I go over here. We mix a little bit of our cadmium red in with our brown. Our orange, so that put our orange and our black and our cadmium red, you know, work into this a little bit because we want this to be a little bit more of that crimson tone. So I'm going to go ahead and work that in. Then, using my little buddy brush here, this Texture in there. Do a few little pulls to reinforce that texture. Bring it from here. And pull up. And then you can start from here too and kind of pull down into that little section. And start picking up some of that cadmium red and that brown that we mixed up with our cadmium orange and our black. Okay, and let's get into all of our red lines. And then we're going to take a little touch of orange. We're going to do a little hit of color right up through there. And then we're going to touch into a bit more of that brown. Kind of work that in here. Just a little push of that. And then I'm going to lighten this up quite a bit. And then a little hit of my lemon. Mm 
Sweep the bed across the top. A little branch here. I'm going to go ahead and connect this a little warmth with that, those tones that I had going. Add a little bit of some flickering to our tree. I'll work that over the top. So, again, this is a little bit of that cadmium yellow and that red and that brown, a little bit of that white in there. I'm just going to work in a little bit of that wood grain right over the top of that brown that we have. Mm -hmm. Little pushes, a little layer of texture. And then I'm going to just kind of do a few little sketches of that kind of into the center of the tree. And we're going to be pouncing in some grain over the top, but this is just a nice little foundation color underneath. All right, and then let's go back in and get some brighter green here. All right, so I'm going to be using a little bit brush, it's going to lift out a little bit, but it's just a tad moist. And then we're going to touch into this bright yellow green and the white, and a little bit of that cadmium yellow. So we warm that up. The white, bright yellow green, a little bit of cadmium yellow, nice and light and pretty. And we're going to start to do just like little. Uh, tiny pulls here. A little twirl in there. And we're just doing little tiny flakes of grass that come in over the top. Mm -hmm. A little bit more water and make that more fluid. A twirl. Make that water a bit more into that. A twirl. And that gives me a much finer blade of grass. And this is going to be very therapeutic and very beginner friendly too. So it's a nice little exercise to do if you're trying to find a way to relax, especially get to this point. Little tiny fold and then lift off with a light clean. Okay, pulls. Continue to see all these little tufts of grass that come out. And you can add a little bit of brown in with this too, and add a lot more water over here. If you need a bit more shadow in there as well, you can start to bring that in. Add a little bit of that mix back in here. Alternating between these two. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, a little twirl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Come back in and do a little drag and put that little horizontal stretch and go back and forth. Mm -hmm. I can look a little bit of that light touch of that bright yellow and green. So soft pulls up. Mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Then a little bit of that brown is going to kind of go right underneath the joints, kind of soften that mm -hmm. ending. Okay, I'm more my cadmium green. I'm going to work that in a little bit of brown cadmium green. And you can see I feel across that green shadow. I've got a little bit of my primary sign blue, so I have like two mm -hmm. touches of that. And we'll do some more touches of that primary sign blue in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That tap on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go right with it. Back here, come in, turn on blue, drop that in. A little bit of that viridian, let's drop that in for some dark texture in here. And let's go back into the brown. And then kind of pop that in. Back on the side of the brush, let's create lots of fun texture in here. Light, light, bright yellow green. It's a brown nice Oh, lovely. Rinse out and dry off. Let's go ahead and take our. Let's go back to Mama. I always come back to Mama. All right, here we go. Bright yellow green. Got a dollop of that. Our little dime size. And we're going to take Mama and we're going to pick up that bright yellow green, a little bit of that cadmium. Green, mix the two. Still a little bit of this brown nearby too, so I'm going to snag a little bit of that, kind of warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to go and kind of push this into my tree. Do a little bit of white too. I'm going to just tell me in the morning too. Okay, I'm going to just 
Congratulations. Kind of back and forth, almost like a little bit of an X stroke, where it kind of makes you feel like you're doing another X like this. Mm -hmm. A little bit of branch down there to kind of keep things. And again, just kind of fish, a little bit of white, light green. And just keep doing those little fishes. And we've got, that was that cadmium yellow. I'm just kind of pushing back and forth in there, a little bit of white. And just kind of softly push that in for little accents. And I leave some of those just kind of dramatically laying on top for that sun, a bright accent over the top with intention. I want that to be kind of let that texture just. Oh, I think over that outside texture, we're just kind of back and forth. Mm -hmm. A little bit of brown to that green, and a little bit of that white. And, you know, at some point you're just going to have to go, I think I've done it, but, you know, you can make your tree as full as you want, a little bit fuller. Mm -hmm. Or more of a baby tree, something. A lot of repetition, a lot of that just creating texture and how little chances and going back and forth. Yeah. 
So very pretty. Don't you add trees? All right, and let's see here. We can do a little bit of this cadmium yellow and the white. And I'm kind of working a little bit of that right through the middle too. A little bit of water. Okay, a little bit of color right through here. I might have a light and I'm going to go back in with that brown. Mm -hmm. More softly work that in. Mm -hmm. Talking all that. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to add some more. Okay, and then I'm just looking down with a few more stars of the brown kind of going through that tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. Okay, so little helpful hints on this section here. You are more than welcome to use the permanent marker that you were given as the most wonderful cheat and just fill it all in with permanent marker, especially if you have a shaky hand. Um, this can be really helpful to do. So like for, you just wanna make sure all the paint is really dry. So you can come back in. Kind of, you know, firmly go over this. And beginners really like how this helps to tidy up those edges. And of course, you can also work into each one of those little dots if you want. Get into the tight areas around the letters. That's also another little helpful sheet there. That's what a beginners really appreciate. Kind of work that in. I'm going to talk about paint here in a second, too. This gives you a good idea. I mean, you can fill it all in with black if you want. Okay. So that's one way to go about it. Uh, another way is, of course, with paint. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit, and we're going to take some water. We're going to add that into the block. A little twirl, and we're going to start to work. Now, I will say, if you end up painting over the little white dots, Real easy to get those back because I'm going to teach you that little trick where we use the end of the handle and add that into white and then just do little presses mm -hmm. around for that. So don't be too worried if you end up losing some dots. But otherwise, we can just take a little bit brush and our black paint, a little bit of water, do a little twirl. Let this be kind of soupy. That gives us, it's going to help that black paint flow into the pores of the canvas. And you just want to carefully go around a lot of little bitty details in here. You build a bit more of a firm press on the brush to help kind of spread the gristles out when you have ample room to do so. But when it's really tight, you want to Ease up on pressure and just barely touch the canvas and let that tip of the brush touch the canvas. And then don't forget about the little twirl 
into that paint. That will refine your tip of your brush into a nice fine point. Mm -hmm. Taking this all the way around. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, another thing too is even if you have used the permanent marker to reinforce because you can also just go with paint real close next to the edge to create that painted texture too. Mm -hmm. Patient. Gentle hand, just barely touch the canvas. Keep working all the way around here. Almost done. I'm going back in and around the letter B just to make sure that we got all the same. Um, all right, Let's see how pretty that is. All right, now we're going to go ahead and rinse out. And let me show you the little trick with the circles. Now you can certainly just leave it just like this because it looks great. Or if you want a definite white painted dot, Take the end of the brush, little bit brush, go into the white paint, see how it's right there on the tip. Mm -hmm. And then you can just touch down on each one of these little dots here. Mm -hmm. You do have to go back into the white paint at least about every third dot. If it's a tiny little tip and so it runs out of paint pretty quickly. Again, we'll just keep doing this all the way around. And we're good. And then with your letter M, of course, you can let the white of your canvas be your white, or you can just very carefully, if you have to do a little bit of tidying up, you can just take your little bit brush and just that white paint and just very gently go into the shape of that way. Yeah, careful little tidy work. Very gentle hands, now barely touch the canvas and fill that in. Mm -hmm. And for a All right. Mm -hmm. And we are done with this beautiful painting of our monogram silo in the country. And so our last finishing touch here will be to sign your masterpiece.
And I encourage you as beginners uh, to use the permanent marker to do this. You just have to make sure that this is all completely dry. And then you can just sign here at the base. And that's going to be your last finishing touch. But this has been so much fun. It's super cute. I love how it turned out. And again, all the supplies that you need are on our website at tipsyartist.com. So thank you again for painting with us. We really appreciate y'all. And we'll see you very soon. Much love to y'all. Toodles.